fundamental issues of one, investment of the Igbo man in his land. It is abomination that the Igbo man will live here and go in the West and invest in the West. When you go to Lekki, 60% of the houses are owned by Igbos. When you go to Kaduna, Kano, everywhere, investments there are owned by Igbo men. They have abandoned their home, the home of their ancestors, the home where they were given birth to, their true identity. Nobody did that to you. You must solve that yourself by divesting your interest and investing in your homeland. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, that's point number one. Number two fundamental mistake you are making here in the East. Worldwide, things are shared by population. In Nigeria, the northern man will have four wives. Each one will have six to ten children. In a household, you have almost 100 persons. The Igbo man will have one man and two children. And on election day, you'll start crying. They are counting chickens. So what solution do you have? Is either the women will give birth to more children, like they did in Iran, when Iran had their revolution. These are practical things that have happened in the world. <laughs> so... Professor Wal, I think the problem the Igbo man has, first of all, is to like himself and invest in his land and increase his population, either by women giving birth to more children or men marrying more wives, the same way they do in every other place. Because our future is at stake. The future of your children, women, please, don't be sentimental. Don't be selfish. The future of your children is at stake. So, in Yelongweyaka, by continuing with the dogma of me, my wife, and two children. It's abomination and it must stop. <laughs> then we say because of religion, we have abandoned certain of our values because of religion. When the people of Israel in the Old Testament asked God, you love us, you made a covenant with us, but we want an earthly king. And God gave them an earthly king and admonished them not to be in a hurry to leave the sight of the king because he's my representative on earth. We have a king here. I expected that immediately after the national anthem and you do the Oibo prayers, a bowl of kola not to be taken to the king. The king will touch the kola first before any other person. And he will break the kola not and pray for everybody. He will break pieces that will go to our young ones here so that that prayer will go to them so that they can take over from us when we pass on. I noticed that Kola not was brought. It wasn't taken to the king. And then it was shared. After the sharing, before he's taken to go and pray. So, Chukunyabaya la inifayim yetata. My dear brothers and sisters, I said earlier that we are in Anyoma, the most cultured in Nigeria, with due respect to all of you and the Aussas and Fulani and others. And I'm saying that because when people are talking of women equality, and I say to them, there's nothing like women equality. There wasn't women equality yesterday. It is not today. It will never be. When you say the Lord's Prayer, you say our Father who art in heaven, you don't say our mother. So they should stop all this nonsense of... There is nothing like that. It's not God's intention. Equality is not God's intention. God's intention is for woman to actualize her purpose in creation. So where is man failing? Man is failing in the evil land because he has refused to give woman space to actualize her purpose in creation. Is there any reason why a woman in the East cannot inherit from her father who delivered her? They do so in the West. They do so in Benin, where I spend decades. It is changed on paper. It hasn't changed practically. It has changed on paper. I spoke to Muslim friends of mine when I was in England decades ago. And in Islam, a woman inherits from the father. 
In fact, Islam permits the woman to retain her maiden name if she so desires. What is the problem that in the East, your own daughter that you delivered cannot inherit from you? It's abomination and a sin crying to God for help. Is there any reason why communities in the East, like I suggested years ago, cannot crown mothers in their communities? the way my forefathers in Anioma decided that there would be a stool for a woman. My community has a traditional ruler. He's in charge of men and male youths and the land. Myself as the Omo, I'm in charge of, I'm in charge of women, female youths and the markets and custodian of our ancestral shrine. And I'm very proud that I serve God through tradition. <laughs> They kept this seat and decided that the man should have his palace. The woman should also have her own palace. So the traditional ruler has his palace, and I also have mine. He has his chiefs, I have my own chiefs. However, the chiefs of the traditional ruler are superior because man is first. That's the way our forefathers kept it in Anioma land, from Asaba to Abo. In all the communities, there is an Omu, there is a traditional ruler. Each one is giving his role to play because God is not a fool by creating woman. <laughs>